All right, okay, so today we are start. well, no, no, <laughs> we're not starting like that. This is the Wired for Sound music server. And straight away you can see from the front panel that it has a CD slot, which means it can rip CDs to its internal optional hard drive. Inside this one, Wired for Sound have put a two terabyte solid state drive, so it's nice and quiet. You can store music on this thing, that's obvious, because it's called a server. But, we look at the back, and yes, we have the normal PC connectivity here, but above it, we have three different digital audio outputs. We've got a coaxial, a Toslink, and an I2S, which is kind of unusual, but I'll be using this with uh, the PS Audio DAC and the Denifrips DAC. So this is also a streamer as well as a server. So in many ways, it's a bit like the Inuus products that stream and serve, you store music inside, and then you have this in your hi-fi rack connected straight to your DAC, assuming that you've, you know, your library can fit on a two terabyte drive. I think that's the maximum for this thing. If your music collection is bigger, you can connect a USB hard drive to the back here. I would recommend connecting something fairly quiet because you don't want that kind of noise in your listening room in your rack. This is a very kind of nicely sized product. One last thing, this is powered by a 12 volt switch my brick. This thing starts at three grand for the i3 version with a, a normal like a mechanical hard disk and then steps up with options for one terabyte SSD, two terabyte SSD which I have and there's an also an i7 option as well for people who want a faster machine with more RAM. But I think for most libraries this will do just nicely. This is a server and a streamer. The software inside is extremely comprehensive. I don't think I've ever seen a server with so many different software options. It does Rune, Squeezebox, UPnP, it does Spotify Connect, it does AirPlay through the SharePort plugin. It has Bliss loaded in, so if you want to kind of customize your cover art or correct for cover art, I recommend Bliss, it's fantastic. I'm so pleased to see that inside here. It's got Minim Server, it's got MPD. If there is a server software that exists in digital audio, it's in this Wired for Sound box. So this is far, far more advanced in terms of breadth of functionality than the, the Rune Nucleus. It's just way more things as well as Rune. Really, this needs to live in the rack unlike the Rune Nucleus, which doesn't have to, because we want to make use of the digital outputs on the back. So I've got a screwdriver and I'm going to open up this Wired for Sound music server just to see what's inside. So popping the lid, this is the optical drive. The meat and potatoes of this particular streaming section is this here, this is the digital output board which is custom designed by EJ Sarmento in California. We can see the hard drive is in here and then the motherboard is on the bottom. But this is the main thing. These two things here, I think, are digital audio clocks. There's the XMOS chip. Maybe this is for like data processing. So I've been using this Wired for Sound server streamer for the last few weeks. And I say server streamer because it is both. It can act as a server in that it sends files to a network streamer that's in my rack over here. And it can also play a role as a streamer in that it can sit in the rack over there and receive files from the server in my kitchen. But we're first gonna look at this as a server. So for that, we need to go behind this wall here and into my kitchen. The Wired for Sound music server, by its name, is a server. So we're here in my kitchen where I normally keep my music server. So here it's just a server, it's not connected to any DAC. For people that understand computers, understand how to install software, configure them, three grand is a lot to spend on a box that just serves files out to your network. But if you want a very easy solution where you just hand over money and you get a server, I'm not going to judge you if you just want to use this as just as a file server. I don't use it like that, as we'll see. Getting music onto the server is really easy. Two ways. You can drag and drop over the network, 
or you can rip CDs using the slot here. We configure the Wired for Sound Music server using its web interface. It's very similar to that used by Antipodes and Sonore. So you can see here we've got the available apps. And from a server point of view, so running in the kitchen as a server, we've got Bubble UPnP server, we've got HQ Player server, Minim server, we've got Plex, Squeezebox server, and then also over on this side on installed apps, you can see I've got Rune server. So available apps are here. We can just, if we want to install one. So let's say I want to install Bliss. Bliss is very cool and it allows me to manage the artwork and the tags on my metadata. So I might want to install that. Go yes, please. And it runs through the install routine here using command line stuff. And then eventually it will go back to the original screen and show us it's installed. So it's, it's just downloading the packages from the internet right now. Complete. Back to package manager. And you can see now it's in, in the installed list of options here. So available apps, install apps. You can use this as a server, as we've just seen, but I think you'd be a bit mad to use this $3,000 Linux PC just as a server, especially as there are such high quality digital outputs on the back of this that can connect directly to a DAC. So this really is probably best used in the first instance as a streamer, and that's what we're gonna do now. So with the Wired for Sound server streamer in my rack, it's now operating as a streamer. It can operate in many different modes. It can do bubble UPnP, minim UPnP. It can do squeeze light, so it behaves like an old squeeze box. It can also do AirPlay, MPD, and HQ player. So many different operational modes. The two that I use for my listening are Rune, so it's being fed by the nucleus in my kitchen to here. And I'm also using Spotify Connect mode on this as well. So that's coming from the cloud to this. So Rune, fires up on, this is a Surface Book 2 tablet portion, and here's my recently added music. The MS1 is here, it's already set up in the settings. Pretty easy to do, so if I want to click the new Orteca NTS sessions, click play. So I've got Rune playing through my Harbaths. So I connected the digital output of the Wired for Sound box to this Denifrips DAC. I generally prefer the coaxial output to the USB in this particular case. What I heard from this Wired for Sound server was some really lovely delicacy and finesse in the top end that recalled what I get from the Wired for Sound modified Sonos Connect. This is a lot cheaper, but this gave me more of that. So more delicacy, more finesse, and a real liquidity and smoothness to music that I really like. It makes music sound like running water. It really communicates the rhythmic flow of music as if it's like a passage through time. That sounds highly pretentious, doesn't it really? But I guess what I'm trying to get to here is that this thing is so smooth and so fluid that it, it's really, that's really quite hard to ignore. The other thing I guess I should mention is that it might be obvious to seasoned audiophiles, but maybe not to beginners, that a computer like this that is specifically designed to stream music and only stream music will sound a lot better than your average Mac or PC. That's an important thing. So this sounds much better. Now I said that this, the Aurelic Ares G1, also sounded much better than a PC. So I guess the next logical question is to ask, well, how does the wired for sound compared to the Auralic. Well, as you can see, the Auralic has a screen and it has Wi-Fi. And the wired for sound has neither of these and it's also more expensive. This is 3,000 US dollars. This is just over 2,000 US dollars. But the crucial difference in sound quality between the Auralic and the wired for sound is I think the wired for sound sounds wetter. So more fluid, not quite as dry as the Aurelic G1, which I would never ever ascribe to this streamer on its own, but the Wired for Sound really does sound more fluid in its presentation of music. But then we'd expect as much because this is three grand, 
This is just over two grand, so you get what you pay for. So for my listening, I used almost exclusively CD rips, listening through a pair of Compact 7 Harbeth loudspeakers, powered by this Hegel H190 integrated amplifier, which was fed by this Denifrips DAC, which initially, before that, was fed by the Inuus Zenith Mark II SE streamer. Comparing that with the Wired for Sound, it's not really a fair fight because the, the Inuus costs twice as much as the Wired for Sound, and it sounds like it as well. It's a bit meatier, it's a bit thicker. In contrast, the Wired for Sound sounds a little bit thinner, but that's not to take anything away from it, it's just you get what you pay for. But this Wired for Sound server streamer has a little trick up its sleeve, and it's right here. This is an I2S output, and the Denifrip stack over there also has an I2S input. So we can use this instead of coaxial. So I can just get this cable here. This is like an HDMI cable, and that connects in there. So you might be wondering what the difference is between coaxial and I2S. Keeping it simple, with a coaxial connection, the clock data and musical data are uh, intertwined, so the DAC has to infer the clock from whatever it receives over coaxial. Whereas with I2S, that's not the case. Musical data and clock data travel separately, so that the DAC can read the clock data directly. I have to keep it simple, right? And for people that know already a little bit about I2S, there's a button here which determines whether you use the Wired for Sound I2S connection standard or the PS Audio. I'm using the PS Audio connection standard here. I'm even using a cable from PS Audio as well. And it goes in like that. And then obviously the other end connects to the DAC. So with the Wired for Sound streamer connected to the Denifrips DAC using I2S, I get a little bit more sense of musical ease that I've spoken about before. A little bit more liquidity. I mean, we're talking single percentage points differences, but they are there. And these little percentage points differences, as you know, all over the place, they add up. But we have to be careful here because we shouldn't think that necessarily I2S is always better than USB or better than coax. That's not necessarily the case. It's very DAC dependent. So EJ Sarmento, who designs the Wired for Sound gear, he says that his 10th anniversary DAC sounds better with USB than I2S. But I think the Denifrip sounds better with I2S myself. PS Audio, the direct stream DAC, I've used I2S, I've also used the USB connection with the Curious Cable. I would still give the edge to USB with Curious Cable compared to I2S, but not here. So again, as with everything in Hi-Fi, it comes down to implementation and is always device dependent. There's no golden rule that this particular topology sounds better than that topology always. It depends upon the devices in play. This modified Sonos from Wired for Sound can only accept 44.1 and 48 kilohertz PCM and upsamples everything to 96 kilohertz. That's the inherent limitation of the Sonos device and EJ's 96 kilohertz upsampling board. However, in the server, we're not limited in any way like that. This server does bit perfect transmission of DSD and also PCM up to 358 kilohertz if you have files of that, those sort of types or if you want to do upsampling to those file types. So I mainly listen to Redbook material with my reviews because that's where most of the music is on, in my library on Tidal and on Spotify. So, so far we've seen the Wired for Sound server operate as a server from a kitchen, mainly here as a streamer in my hi-fi rack, but we can bring the two together. This is the really cool thing about this device. We can bring them together. This can be a server and a streamer because we've got the hard drive inside here so I can run, actually, I can run Rune Core in here and it can stream to itself. But the really interesting thing about using this as a server streamer is that it sounds a little bit better than just being used as a streamer alone. I've done this with Rune, having Rune Core on here, streaming to itself, so to the digital outputs on the back. I think that sounds a little bit better than streaming across the network. And I think that's because the Ethernet input on the back of this device is not working furiously to read and error correct the incoming data stream. Everything is taking place in here. It's designed to be low noise with a low noise power supply that we've seen. It's an awesome sounding self-contained solution. So it's a server or it's a streamer or it's a server streamer. You can choose how to use it.